It's crazy how the Crisis series left one whole mark on culture. That being that the game would vaporize old computers for fun. I mean, that was really it, right? No one has any deep connections to the games outside of that. I mean, except for the part where they, you know, created this whole future of gaming and trends that would follow after it. If anyone can leave a comment saying the name of the Crisis protagonist's name, we'll say you win the game. And to make this work, the contest ends 30 seconds after I post this video so that you can't Google it in time. Quick, go, go. Full name. Don't just say profit. I don't do half jobs. Oh, time's up. How would you feel if I told you that the people who made the Super Suit Psycho Fantasy would end up making the good version of Red Dead Redemption Online? No Arthur Morgan asking if he's a good man, just random townsfolks instantly charging at you with a knife and proving to you that they are 100% bad men. Battle Royale is a pretty saturated genre. You've got Fortnite versus Call of Duty, and everything in between is a no man's land of fallen dreams. Then you've got Hunt Showdown that just doesn't seem to give a damn what anyone else thinks about it. It's also been my getaway game for the past month or two. It's very fun, and I kind of enjoy killing people in it. You use yeehaw guns and no one hits the gritty. Also, if you step in water, you get eaten alive by a million tiny leeches. Though that's not new to battle royales if you count the in-game store. Hunt drops you and around 20 other people onto a map with one or two boss monsters on it. You're also fending off dozens of zombies and one smug guy waiting in one of the sniper towers. The goal is to be the lucky fella to kill the monster. You could also get both bounties if you were the kind of kid to put an apple on the teacher's desk. After killing one monster, you gain the ability to see exact player's positions, while everyone else gets access to a vague form of your location. Once you have the monster's bounty, you need to get to one of the extraction points before your whole team is iced by one guy dual-wielding two silenced poisoned apples. And that's just the last step. First, you need to find the fucking thing, which requires you to investigate three clues or stumble on it upon the way. The clues are spread out on the map, and with each clue, the search zone gets narrower. To spot the clues, you need to enter Dark Sense. This dims the view around you, but highlights objectives. Once you get the boss's location, you can hold the Dark Sense button to see if anyone's there. If it glows white, that means you can run in and kill it. If it's red, that means you can sit in a house for 10 minutes waiting for someone to pop through a tiny crack in the wall. As now, there are other players nearby. But in this hypothetical scenario, let's say you kill those two and move on to the boss, which is going to make a lot of noise. After you kill it, you must banish it. This is an automatic process that takes a minute or two. Banishing the target shows everyone where the bounty is and lets them converge on your location. If there is more than one bounty on the map, you might even get lucky and no one will show up. You can even put your feet up and get a nice seat near the window. Once the banishment reaches 100%, you can finally collect the bounty. Now your dark sight is amped up, allowing you to spot other hunters. This runs on a time limit for 5 seconds, so you gotta use it real fast and find out who's sniffing the doorways with their double barrel shotgun. Just because you went through all the effort to kill the boss doesn't mean the bounty is yours, nay nay. Your sweet two shot kill ass is fair game until you get on the boat out of there, which isn't helped by the massive thundercloud in the sky letting everyone know where you are. So it's a race to either get out as soon as possible or kill every son of a bitch who thinks they're that guy. On the map there are a few extract points. If you die, that hunter is iced, and now you've just lost all of the their gear and skills. Get on the extract without being hassled for 30 seconds and you win. Now you can cash in that bounty for better gear and level up said hunter. I've always wondered what the hunters do with the spare seconds of dark sight if they leave with any. I mean being a peeping tom would only be made hotter if the lady is the morphing orange blob from the blackout club. You have to keep your eye out for players, but the more immediate enemy is the infected. Zombies don't actually pose a threat, they pose a dare. Can you kill them without making a scene? See, the zombies don't actually stand a chance against loaded phosphorus bullets, but do you know who can? Other people with explosive crossbows. Your gunshots can be heard over giant distances, so other players will use this to find you and kill you. Nothing is worse than minding your own business, then suddenly getting cracked at from the trees because you wanted to get that meathead off the clue. The proper way is to use melee weapons. A charged strike drops a good amount of your problems, even the ones at home. That is, until you get to certain special infected, like the bee ladies, that scream and send a hive of poisonous wasps to sting and harass you while also making this noise that sounds exactly like teeth falling out of your head. Killing them will stop the bees, but it's a ranged attack. So if they're on a rooftop, there's no stabbing them unless LeBron makes a career change. I cannot stress how important it is that you make one of your party members carry a silenced pistol, specifically the poison poisoned a silenced Nagant. Yeah, you can silence the guns, but they deal low damage, and ammo in this game is actually more rare than you'd think it is. It's basically anti-bee lady protection. 
the other enemies in the game can slip in your way, like the giant cleaver wielding guys, or the spiny guys that resist your melee attacks. Fortunately for you, anyone can kill one of them. Even if you don't bring a knife, you could bash their heads in. They exist to make the action more intense, as they force you out of your position and whittle away at your resources. The maps do end up being quite big, though they're not the most exciting. From a company that built its legacy on treating your computer like it was one of Terrence Fletcher's classmates, you'd expect some real complicated waterfalls or hardcore feats. Instead, you've got a million rusted out buildings surrounded by open forests. They have been setting the map on fire for some in-game event, but that's really the most of it. The best is when they turn out the lights, reducing sight lines and turning the flare gun into something that blows your eyes out. A few months ago, I shot a gun for the first time. The cartridge burned my hand as it ejected. I had to sit there carefully putting rounds into the magazine, while the southern lady in the back had her hand balled into a fist the moment she saw my New York ID, even if I was a bit intimidated by the idea of holding the ultimate decision maker. Though I sort of expected it to be a smoother time, with the targets shouting, He went over there! Fan out. I'll search over here. I thought I would never experience that again until I opened up Hunt Showdown and my character popped out his revolver, carefully took each bullet out, said a little nursery rhyme, then put in a new one. Then I also cried as my character ejected a bullet for my arrogance of reloading, and that round was lost forever. All of the guns in this game are very old. If you told them you were gay, they would refuse to fire. There's only one machine gun and you need to spend time using a regular rifle to earn it. Everything else is bolt action rifles, revolvers, repeaters, pistols, and bows. And yet I feel Hunt has a pretty big variety in it. Each weapon can be loaded with specialty rounds, and you have a bunch of different modifications. You could get the same rifle with a scope on it, add a weighted mace so that it can double as a bludgeon, make it more compact so that you have more room for bigger guns. My personal favorite are the bows, which can use concertina arrows, which upon contact explode into barbed wire. Combine that with the concertina bomb, and you can use what I call the Fortunato build, where I kill the boss, then seal every exit with wire so that anyone who thinks they're gonna get that bounty from me is gonna pry it from my cold, dead hands. There's a light elemental style at play. You have regular damage, then there's fire, poison, bleeding, and concertina. Fire deals damage over time and permanently reduces your health. Poison prevents you from healing for its duration. Bleeding drains your health until you do a lengthy bandage animation, and Concertina comes with a complimentary bottle of Amontialdo. You can apply these to your bullets, but there's a good helping of grenades and traps that can be used just as well. Like you can repurpose the bees by putting them in a jar, but they still attack the closest thing to them. Then I noticed that everyone carries an antidote shot, and I realized that I just brought suicide in a bottle. Each boss also embodies an element. The butcher is a giant lad that swings fire, the spider crawls and spits poison, the assassin causes bugs then stabs you from behind with bleeding damage, and Scrap Beak drops concertina bombs while running around. The bosses aren't super tough, but they can kill you if you take them lightly, which always leads to the most perplexing situation when people find your body. Everyone else was killed by living, breathing asswipes valuable people, but at least relatable. Like one of those guys probably fumbled his sports betting or committed a fender bender then left without telling anyone. Killing the big guy is usually an exercise in flinging ammo as fast as you can, then walking in and out of the arena to heal up. Or you could just attach a sticky bomb to the boss, which deals about 75% of their health. Then you just spam a clip till they die. Yeah, you can spend one inventory slot to erase anything. The only one this doesn't work on is the assassin who Delson rows every five fucking seconds. Once you kill a boss, it's time to banish it. Now everyone knows where the bounty will be, and you need to set up traps to secure that area for three and a half minutes, if there is anyone left. I've had games where it's three minutes of just staring out a window at nothing, thinking, this is just like real Louisiana. I would recommend opening up YouTube or spending the time scratching your belly, but now it's time for listen mode. Other people will try not to make a sound while they survey the area. They can avoid making loud bang bang bangs, though that doesn't stop them from crunching on leaves and broken glass. This is also when those annoying zombies can finally work for you as they put pressure on hunters. You have the comfort of four walls and doors, but anyone approaching has to put up with the other players coming up from behind, so there's an added chance you and your posse sit within those four walls to the sound of rapid gunfire between other parties, and think to yourself, ha, ah, this is just like New York. Eventually a Molotov flies through your window and it's time to get into an actual shootout. Bullets rip right through you, so a good two, three shots is death or even one if they have certain weapons. Thankfully, the guns are held together by hopes and dreams. A missed shot from the enemy is almost always followed up by a lengthy re-rack, giving you time to run for cover or roll the dice yourself. It's got a fast time to kill, but it's not like Rainbow Six Siege, where every door is doubling as the pearly gates. The biggest threats to you are dual-wielded revolvers and the shotgun. 
Then you've got the one-shot special weapons. But weirdly enough, the Nitro Rifle isn't as intimidating, because it's the most expensive weapon in the game and sounds like every other rifle. So you can rest easy knowing that even if the Bozo gets that bounty out of there, he's not getting his investment back, because for $1,000 you can carry a whopping six bullets. But the rhythmic tapping of dual pistols is kind of the thing that keeps me up at night. These are one of the few weapon choices in the game that allow for rapid fire. I've had the double silenced poison Nagant shoved up my mouth so much I can taste the art arsenic on command. Once you kill someone, they will be downed, which can lead to them being revived by a buddy. If you don't want that to happen, it's time to bust out the grenades. If you turn a downed body into a burning one, they'll be harder to revive and can actually become unsavable. There is a counter grenade that suffocates all flames, which can be used to save them. However, it takes up one of your precious gear slots. And I don't know about you, but I would trade my friend's life for a flare gun round. If you want more options, or that silly little concertina bow I told you about, there's two paths. You could go to college and work up the bloodline, or go to trade school and grind specific guns. The bloodline goes up every time you play a match. It's traditional experience points like mom used to make. Conversely, each brand of gun has its own experience bar. By shooting things with that gun, you'll unlock new bullet types and weapon models. Your hunter also levels up giving them access to a list of perks that you can select and purchase. These are all lost when your hunter dies, so get used to going back to this list and vaguely remembering the name of that one that makes your character catch their bullets in midair. If I'm being honest, I think Hunt Showdown might be the secret good battle royale, the one you only unlock after going through three walls and mistyping the jerk's guide into YouTube. Not that there's anything wrong with the others, they're just bad and I hate everyone who plays them. Hunt Showdown is a game that very rarely drops its tension. The game systems play into each other in a way that means that encounters will feel unique and exciting until you hit MMR level 5. Once you're there, I would uninstall. And to end this video off, I want to narrate a portion of this game. My friend and I are carefully approaching the bounty. I decide to place a handful of concertina trip mines behind me when we suddenly get shot at from the house. We manage to kill one, but the other wounded my friend, requiring him to heal. I quickly tap him, then hear him scream because he steps on one of the traps from before. <laughs> During that fight, we noticed that the eye in the sky has moved, meaning that the pair with the bounty used this shootout to bail and make for the exit. This is also a one bounty match, so what follows is a high speed chase with multiple parties vying for the same bozos. During that chase, I get accosted by zombies, which means I'm lagging behind. I catch up just in time to join in on one last three way fight, which ends with one of the bounty holders going down. We wonder where the other person is when suddenly this name pops up on my screen, telling me that he shrugged his shoulders and let his teammate die. This is the result of millions of systems interplaying with each other, and I know that sounds like the gamer version of describing your day on TikTok, though one, I was happy to get it all on camera, two, this is what I had for dinner that night. I can't promise that Hunt Showdown is the best battle royale. I find that their content updates are a little underwhelming. It's usually another skin, but the skins in this game feel very unimpactful when characters just get seen as a fucking blur. The most I get to do is admire them while looting, wondering how they got their asses whooped by the butcher. It was pretty impressive how they created the future of gaming with Crisis, but here they are with their battle pass and trend chasing. Sure, you're able to run Crisis, but can you outrun Gravity, John? Hey, thanks for watching. I'd like to give a quick shout out to the people on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. I would especially like to thank Noah Upton, Jonah Simpson, Faye Lin, and MarioFan997. As always, I have a link to a Twitter and Twitch in the description below. I hope you guys are alright with all this variety content I've been posting. I've even got one more that's almost done being written, so hope to see you again soon. Take care of yourselves, and have a good one.